Okay, many thanks for that. So just to say again, my name is Jessica Dowling. I'm the admissions manager here at the Smurfit MBA. Before I could actually start with the presentation, I just want to say that, as you can probably tell from the background, we are all presenting remotely today, and that is due to the COVID-19 situation. So currently UCD has um, uh, put everything online in terms of lectures and also staff are working remotely. So please bear with us because we're all working on internet connections from home and you might see or hear uh, the odd baby or maybe a cat or a dog or something in the background. Um, so please just bear with us with that. Um, what we're trying to do obviously is self-isolate in order to flatten the curve. So we are hoping that even though it's a very unusual time at the moment that in the next couple of weeks things will return to normal and we hope at the moment that all our classes, all our courses, including the MBA that I'm talking about today, will start in September as usual. So that is the plan for the moment, but obviously we are you know, following government advice and everything like that. So just, just to start off with that. So I am just going to give a very quick overview of the program and the school itself before I hand over to Daniel. Um, so you can see from this first slide here, it says why UCD Smurfit. So firstly, just to say that the Smurfit School of Business is the graduate business school within University College Dublin. So UCD itself is the largest university in Ireland and is a very large research university and it's based in Belfield in Dublin. But for the Smurfit School of Business, we're actually based in Blackrock, which is about two kilometers away. And our school is solely dedicated to graduate business courses. So on, in our master's programs, we do master's programs such as uh, aviation finance, data analytics, everything, everything that you can imagine in terms of business. And we also have our full-time MBA and executive MBA programs. Our school is consistently ranked in the top 100 of all the leading uh, surveys. So the Financial Times and The Economist would be just two of them. Our school also has the triple crown of accreditation, which means that we are globally, you know, we have met all the conditions of AMBA, ASCSB and Equius. Um, and what that means is that all our programs are accredited and they are up to a certain standard. We are the only school in Ireland that has triple accreditation and we are one of only a very small number of schools globally who are actually triple accredited. You can also see there we're a member of SEMS and the GNAM, a Global Network for Advanced Management. So we're a very well connected school. If you do decide to study at UCD Smurfit, you will not only get access to our own networks, but you'll also get access to all these other fantastic networks, alliances and memberships that we are a part of. Um, so then just go going on to an MBA program overview itself. So we have a full-time program and also two-year part-time program. So I'll be concentrating mainly on the full-time program today, um, but I'll also talk a little bit about the executive part-time option. Um, so our MBA is, it was the first in Ireland. It was one of the first in Europe. So we have over 50 years experience of uh, delivering this MBA. So, you know, it is a very well-established program, as I mentioned in the last slide. Uh, we have a real focus on practical learning. So there would be uh, a lot of group study, working on case studies. We really try to focus it on a practical level so that it, you know, really when you go into the business world, it's not just, you know, you're not just working off books. You need to have a very practical focus. So we do really strive on that. And as well as that, our global perspective, uh, we do trips, international trips as part of the MBA. And it is a very global MBA as well, because even though Ireland obviously is the hub of a lot of multinationals, we are still, still quite a small country. So what we try to do with students on our MBA is to give them a very good global perspective. So if they do decide to pursue a career outside of Ireland post MBA, that they will be able to do that with no problem at all. Um, so the MBA itself, as I said, it's a year long full-time program. The modules that it covers, it's a mix of core modules and optional modules, and they are very business focused. So it's everything from business analytics, strategy, HR, everything like that. So it's very, it is very rounded and it's designed to give you a full overview of all different business practices. As well as the actual practical modules that you learn, we also have a leadership and development program as part of the MBA. And that really can be divided into three sections. So the first would be coaching in terms of presentation skills and team leading skills. So, you know, in shorthand, basically your soft skills. So we really work with you to develop those skills, how to develop, how to lead in a classroom, in a boardroom, you know, those kind of like skills themselves that aren't necessarily intrinsic. We also have an MBA alumni mentoring scheme, which uh, my colleague Mark may talk about later a little bit. And we also do testing with you, psychometric testing, everything like that. So it's really designed to kind of bring you forward as a person 
and then that combined with the actual practical modules that you learn it really gives you you know uh, you know a huge benefit when it comes to being then in the career workspace as well as that we also have mba clubs so we have clubs in everything from entrepreneurship to different sports we have a gender on the mba club and you can actually set up your own club within the mba when you are on it uh, you're giving support um financial support included from the program office anything that you may be interested in you know you can set up that club and that really helps as well with the networking and you know getting to know people just outside of your mba as well and then from an international perspective we do have accommodation on site uh, so you can avail of that as an mba student and we also have a dedicated international student support so if you are coming from outside of ireland we will work with you we will help you with you know we can advise as much as we can on visas places to live we generally advise any students from coming overseas to maybe come a few weeks earlier and we can work with you on onboarding and everything like that so we do really look after both our domestic and our international students so just to go on then really this slide is more about why ireland so overall ireland is a very safe country uh we are you know our economy is very strong at the moment it is a very good place to be based. Obviously with Brexit, we are now the only English speaking country in Europe, other than Malta, if I leave that. Um, so, you know, it is a great place to work. And this slide really just kind of shows you the different sectors that have invested in Ireland. So, you know, you can see from everything from pharma, med, into the uh, tech sectors, into financial services, everything like that. So, you know, if you are interested in working in any of these sectors, you very much can get that experience and that exposure while working and living in Ireland. We also here have a two year stay back visa, which means that two years after graduation, you can stay and work in Ireland and that's not tied to an employer. You can work, you know, where you would like to work. So it's a great way to build your network and build your skills. And then what's really, you know, a really good thing to think about when you come to Ireland or if you're considering Ireland for your MBA is that the network and the skills that you get, get here that you build up here, they're very transferable. So for example, you could work in Ireland for up to two years post your MBA, and then you know, go to the United States, go, to, go back home, go to the Middle East. You can really travel with both the learning that you get on the course, and then also the experience that you will get within Ireland. So you know, it's a great program in that respect. And yeah, I hope you uh, find the rest of this webinar interesting. So now what I'm going to do is hand over to Daniel, I believe, who is a current full-time student on the MBA. Hello. Thank you, Jessica. Um, as Jessica just said, I'm Daniel Degnan. Um, I'm from Ireland and I'm currently completing my MBA here at Smurfa Business School. Um, just, I suppose, to give you the best um, overview and introduction from my experience, I'm kind of just going to break it up into three areas. Just for thinking back to myself um, last year when I was in your shoes, um, the kind of advice I might want to hear or um, the background I might want to hear. So. I'm going to just give you a bit about my own personal background and my career um, background, um, the motives that I had for pursuing an MBA, and then I'll talk about the MBA itself. So my background, I studied um, civil engineering in college, qualified as a civil engineer, um, studied that for four years, and then I worked as a project engineer and design engineer for just under six years. Um, now, I did that in Ireland, the UK, and also in New York. I was mainly in the transport and infrastructure sector, but also did some structures when I was in New York. Um, so I did that for just under six years. Um, I was also involved in a small startup with my brother, but that was just on the side, but it was mainly uh, engineering. Um, so I suppose after five or six years working as an engineer, I was kind of looking forward, I suppose, for the next five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, and kind of reverse engineering from there. Kind of looking to where I wanted to be and where I thought I'd be, and that this is where I kind of lead into my motives for the MBA. Um, I kind of see myself. I was either going to be running, um, running, owning, and running my own firm, be that in engineering or outside engineering, or I would be uh, running a firm for a firm for shareholders. Um, obviously, a firm that I wouldn't totally own myself, and that's that's kind of where my goals were, and that's where I wanted to be. But obviously the only experience I had and the education I had was in engineering. Now I love the engineering and the tactical side of things, but I also always liked the management side of it, the leadership side of it, um, finances and economics of the business. So I started, um, again, this is in my mo motives, I started to look at how could I best um, prepare myself for the future? So I started looking at full-time courses and part-time courses. 
um, not just MBAs, I started looking at various different courses. And through my research, I kind of came to the idea that what I was looking for was, my plan was to either do it part-time or do it full-time. So I came to the realization that for me, at 27 years of age, it best suited me to do it full-time. I decided to do that, take a break from my job. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be getting paid for the year, but I thought it was just the best thing for me, really. And what made me go down the route of an MBA was, I really seen, for me coming from an engineering background, the best return on my invested time and any money I would invest or foregoing wages or salary or what, what, what it may be, the best return for my time invested and I suppose my capital or money invested was to do an MBA. Because it didn't just focus on the financial aspect or the economics, it also you know, gave me the accounting, management accounting, marketing, entrepreneurship, negotiation. It just gave me the broad range of tools, as, as I said, that I feel would put me in the best position over the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and would really give me the tools that I need to succeed um, in, the way, in the way I wanted to. And also, it would allow me to either stay in engineering or move away from engineering. So they were kind of my motives. I wanted to do a master's anyways, as I said. Um, and really, the best return, the best way I can tell you as uh, prospective students is, it was the best return for my invested time and the money that I may invest was an MBA. Um, so then to move on to the MBA, I suppose, I was looking at several different colleges to go to, probably up to 10 different colleges. And eventually I whittled it down to Smurf Business School, obviously for a lot of obvious reasons um, that probably Jessica has covered. Um, it's triple accreditation. It just really has a great name. Um, and I did some research uh, online and talking to people that I had studied here before, done their MBAs here at Smurf before. And um, basically everything was pointing towards Smurf Business School. Um, but then to look, I suppose, at the MBA itself, I've kind of just broke it down again to give you as prospective students the best idea possible. I broke it down into kind of three areas where the first area would be the course itself. So that's obviously all the modules you do and you end up, you know, you'll do your exams, you'll end up with grade point average and you're obviously your master's degree. But that's not just where the value lies. Like obviously within that, you've got your financial reporting, management accounting, financial statement analysis. We do entrepreneurship, we do negotiations, economics, um, we do organizational behavior, all of those, which are great. Like that, that's why I came here to learn all of them. But I suppose why the course exceeded my expectations would be the other elements of it. The kind of add-ons I would say, and I think Jessica kind of touched on them there. Like the career service is excellent. Um, the coaching we do, so I've got, I've got a coach, I go and see him, I've seen him maybe, I've seen him three or four times this year already, and he, he coaches me, I sit down with him one-to-one -one for an hour, and he coaches me through my career, my, like my background, and where, he, he kind of structures your thoughts on where you want to go and what you want to do, um, and then we've got the presentation and public speaking coaching, um, which is again excellent, um, we've got the leadership, the overall leadership development program, um, then we've got the mentoring. So I've been partnered with um, a guy here in Smurfit. He's actually um, an ex-soldier. He did his he did his MBA in Smurfit in 2010. So he's came back now, and now he's mentoring me 10 years later. Um, he was in the military and switched uh, to a career in business. He's worked for Digicel in the Caribbean since finishing his MBA. Um, he actually went on to co-found a company called Firmwave. Uh, he was the CEO of that company and he's since sold that company. And now he's CEO of another company called Metrofit. So obviously I've met him, that mentoring started in January and I've met him three times and I'm actually doing a video call with him um, tomorrow morning again, so that'll be the fourth time. So obviously getting to talk to the likes of him um, is just invaluable really. And I, I don't know what other course you would get it on. Um, also the other things, I guess, to really, really show the real value of the course would be the extra add-ons. I went, as part of G, the GNAM course, I went to Yale School of Management, the Ivy League College in America. I got to go there in October. Um, so that was one international trip. I'm just back from my international trip to Argentina. Again, this is all part of the course. We were in Argentina in Buenos Aires for a week, um, looking at different firms over there. Um, I entered and qualified to partake in the Georgetown case study competition which is in Georgetown in Washington. Now, obviously that's been canceled and we're doing it virtually, but 
on early on any normal given year um, i would be going there and then there's a fourth trip the international consulting trip which is in june um in lisbon so that's um the fourth trip so like for the space of 12 months again the value i'm getting for international trips um is just excellent um and then there's obviously the various clubs that jessica has spoken about but um I suppose the most important thing, and I'll wrap up on this um, just to outline the real value, as all the things I've just mentioned, like I could go on for a lot longer about the value I feel I'm getting from the course, um, but the classmates and working with them in class through the modules that I've spoken about, the classmates is really where one of the huge value points is. I'm a civil engineer. There's maybe four or five different, different types of engineers in the class, industrial engineers, mechanical, electrical, chemical engineers. But we've also, we've got two medical doctors, a surgeon, we've got two pharmacists, lawyers, solicitors, bankers, financial traders. Um, so of the 31 of us in the full-time course, you've got so many different various backgrounds. And that's a learning experience in itself, even away from the academics. It's nearly like a career service in itself. You're talking to people in different backgrounds, um, and different experience and it's just great bouncing ideas off each other every day and as I said that's nearly making you grow as much as anything else but um, to wrap up really the college itself such a lovely place to come every day and to study and from the admission staff Jessica right through to the professors and the classmates they've selected in the MBA it's all just been absolutely excellent and something I think I look back on um, in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years time and I'll, it'll be time really really well spent and i think it would really put me in a position um to really meet my goals and targets in the future but um now i'm going to pass you on to yasin who's a fellow classmate of mine on the full-time mba program and he will give you his insights thank you very much Daniel, and hi everyone so uh my name is uh, yasin jolassi i'm uh, originally from tunisia uh, I'm an industrial engineer, uh, but I have been working in the oil and gas industry for the past six years. So I've been working in the Tunisia, Algeria, United States, and my last assignment was uh, <clears throat> was in Saudi Arabia. So basically, I spent six years in the oil and gas industry, and then I, like, I kind of felt that if I want to achieve my career goals and get very quickly to the to a position of high responsibility and high impact, I will have to uh, improve my business skills. So I have very technical background and I needed to gain, like to uh, gather all the tools required to be a strong uh, business leaders. So I decided to do an MBA. Uh, the choice of the geography was obvious for me because my wife is working uh, here in Ireland. So uh, I decided to do an MBA, to have uh, one year off and do the MBA here. Um, so uh, why UCD? So uh, when I decided to do the MBA in Ireland, I, I, I start asking like a lot of friends, uh, my wife, colleagues as well, and all, all the advice that I had, all, all of them pointed to a UCD. So I decided to do my research as well. So I think as uh, Jessica and Daniel already said, like the triple accreditation, the ranking, like the, the quality of the curriculum is really strong and the brand, the brand name is really relevant in Ireland and outside of Ireland. And there is a strong alumni network, like people working all, all over the world and uh, very easy to reach. Uh, plus, uh, I would say the diversity of our class, we have, I think, 70% of the class are, are uh, coming from uh, uh, different backgrounds and different countries. I've been working for uh, like in different countries as well. And um, even the, the, the small class size, so this year we are 31. So it gives the right balance to be, uh, to be able to gain knowledge from our uh, classmates, but at the same time be able to engage and participate in the, during the class. Plus, uh, I think as Daniel uh, mentioned, there, uh, there is a strong uh, uh, focus on the an, an international experience. So, uh, yeah, we have been uh, um, going uh, to university outside of Ireland, like some of our classmates went to Yale, uh, Berkeley, uh, IE Business School, China, all over the world. So this, this is a great uh, experience. And also I just came back from uh, Stockholm and uh, Helsinki where we spent uh, one week. 
So basically, you have been uh, visiting startups, company. We even visited the central bank of uh, of Finland, and it was like a great, great experience to have exposure to leaders in the industry and uh, like in, in, in those countries. So uh, the choice of UCD was always for me like the quality of the curriculum, the quality of the, of my classmates, and the exposure to inter uh, to the international uh, business world. So basically, uh, it it checked all all the all the boxes for me, and uh, my, my choice was uh, very obvious to go and do, do my MBA in UCD. Uh, and now, if uh, like if I will I will describe my experience in the MBA, I will say like three main pillars for my experience so far. So first is a strong business knowledge, like I've been uh, acquiring a lot of knowledge on uh, on the business side, something like. Uh, where I had like a big gap since I came from a technical background. Second is building self-awareness. And I think like this is one of the most important thing in order to be able to, to lead in, a, in, a, in any industry or any sector. And third is a strong uh, a career support. Like most of the people are career changer and they uh, like they do the MBA to change their career, but they also don't know where to go. And the, the, the career center is also there to to help you understand yourself and then understand your motivation and, and get to the right path. So uh, for the business training, so most of the classes are based on uh, case studies. So there is a lot of practicality. Um, uh, most of our professors are have the uh, both academic and uh, business uh, experience. So basically, there is the right balance between theory and also practical, uh, practical, uh, uh, practical examples. So it's very easy to to uh, relate to those examples and understand the, the theory and be able to self reflect also on our experience. There is a lot of like business decision that has been made in my previous company. And now I'm able to uh, think back back about those business decisions. And now I'm able to understand why my manager took that decision, not another one. Second is self-awareness. And I think as, uh, as Daniel mentioned, there is uh, a strong uh, leadership development program. So we have a lot of workshop where we actually try to understand ourselves, our motivation. Uh, our leadership style and also try to understand people like uh, our classmates and uh, group mates like how they function and uh, now I feel that I'm able to understand myself and also understand people and for like different type of people we need to adapt our style of leadership or of style of uh, interaction like this is a great uh, opportunity and so uh, beside the fact that we have uh, the, this leadership development program we have a lot of uh, like most of the classes are we have at least two or three assignments which is group work so basically the MBA give you kind of safe environment to ex uh, to experiment all what you learn so you experience your leadership skills you experiment how to improve the dynamic of, uh, of your group um, and yeah so it's it's a safe uh, it's a safe environment and you can even uh, experiment like uh, most of the people want to improve their their representation skills as well so it's like it's really time off uh, out of the system to be able to gain a lot of experience. Like this, this semester I've been working with five different groups and each group like have diverse, people have diverse background and coming from different countries. So you get to, um, to see uh, how to interact with each type of uh, people and improve your leadership skills and improve your, uh, the, the soft skills. And third is uh, the uh, career center. So basically, you have strong, uh, as Daniel mentioned as well. So we have a coaching uh, program. We actually uh, meet with the coach every one month, and you get to talk about yourself and try to dig uh, more into what's what's your motivation, where do you want to go, and it's like uh, a, a sounding board where you can actually see. Uh, what uh, what do you want to improve? What's your strength, your weakness, and what exactly you want to uh, to do in your in your uh, in your career? And we have the mentorship program. Basically, you uh, you are connected with a leader from uh, from uh, um, uh, from an industry where you want to move, and be, basically you get to to learn like 
how to move fast, how to get there, how to like you, you get the strategy, you gain like the insights strategy from people who were able to have uh, to achieve big things, and you get like their advice and their uh, how they how did the, they uh, achieve uh, those uh, the, their goals. So yeah, basically like those three pillars are are really, uh, really leading to a transformative experience. Like I, I really feel just after one uh, one semester, I really feel that I'm I'm really different from the person that I was before the MBA. So for example, now uh, in, uh, for, in uh, Scandinavia, we uh, we met with uh, one of the poly, uh, senior leader in the central bank. And um, so the presentation was about uh, the monetary policy in Finland, the fiscal policy, uh, all the drivers of their economy. And it's great to see that I'm able, I'm coming from technical background. So like before the MBA, I will not be able to understand anything, but now I'm able to understand and to interact like those with uh, those kind of people who are like very senior and are actually the, the people behind the, the, the decision making in, in the whole uh, country. So it's great to see that we are able to interact with those people and you, you start seeing the slowly, slowly the difference in yourself and it's really like really a transformative experience. And uh, yeah, so that's it from my side. And now I'm gonna hand it over to, to Mark who will talk more about the uh, Career Support Center for the future MBA and good luck for everyone. Thanks, Yassine. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us um, this afternoon or morning or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Um, so as, uh, as Yassine said, and my name is Mark and I'm the MBA careers manager here at UCD Smurfit. So um, firstly, just to explain a little bit about the team uh, and how we're structured. So UCD is obviously a, a large, well, Ireland's largest university. And then we have a separate campus down in Blackrock for UCD Smurfit. Um, and we actually have a separate uh, careers team down there as well, which I'm part of. Uh, and we really specialize and, and just work with the postgraduate uh, business master students, which obviously includes the full-time and executive MBA students. So, um, you know, that helps us to kind of prioritize our time and also um, build up expertise in the, in the types of careers and, and supporting those kind of students. Um, uh, so the, the, there's a team. Um, my role then is to manage the careers programs for the MBA classes specifically, so full-time and executive. Um, and, and I would be your primary point of contact within the career service if you were to join us at UCD. Uh, although you would no doubt meet other members of the, the team uh, during your year with us. Uh, we also use a number of external um, specialists. So, you know, us in the team, we are kind of very experienced, but we're sort of generalists. So um, we would bring people in to add expertise to the team at particular points in the year. So that might be industry expertise, or they might be experts in say storytelling uh, or one particular aspect of job search. Um, in terms of what the career service does, uh, it might, might be fairly obvious to you, but really we're supporting the uh, job search um, uh, strategies and job search effectiveness and efficiency of our students. So that's really our focus. Um, uh, just say, obviously, there's a lot of personal and professional development on the, uh, the MBA program, as Yassine and Daniel did a, a good job of covering um, within the leadership development program. So that's really covered there. And we would be more in terms of um, helping you understand a bit about yourself and what what job, what career you're looking for after the MBA. Um, and secondly, helping you kind of find those opportunities. So, you know, that would be things like posting jobs, helping you with your networking um, strategy, uh, introducing you to employers and alumni potentially in, in companies that you might be interested in, in sectors that you might be interested in exploring. And then obviously helping you once you've identified what you want to do, where the opportunities are, to then apply to those opportunities effectively. So that would be everything from obviously having a CV that might get you an interview through to uh, then when you land that interview, uh, how do you communicate yourself effectively 
ad interview, um, how do you put yourself across on, on LinkedIn, right through to maybe how you, you know, if you're successful getting an offer, how you negotiate your, your salary. So it's that whole chain really. Um, and then just uh, really talking a little bit about what makes us different because you know, there's a lot that every career service does. I mean, the first thing to say really is, um, you know, you, you probably already had um, an experience of, of attending higher education um, and maybe even engaging with career services there. Um, what you'll kind of find at business schools is, um, firstly, we're, we're probably in your face a little bit more. and we're, we're really embedded in the program. Um, secondly we are you know we're pretty well resourced to work with you it's a small class um and uh, and we can provide therefore kind of unlimited uh, interaction with the career services you need us um, and the third thing really in terms of business school experiences you'll find how much we we lean on and we engage with the alumni community um, and that's really critical particularly at the mba level um uh, and especially in Ireland, where really networking is going to be the most effective way of you finding a job. So that doesn't mean we leave that all to you. Obviously, we give you the kind of toolkit to be able to go out there and identify and, and um, communicate effectively with, with specific individual alumni on a one-to-one -one basis. But then we would also set up networking opportunities for the whole class throughout the year, um, whether that's using alumni uh, through our mentoring program that um, uh, Yasin and Daniel spoke about there, uh, or uh, we have a number of alumni career panels throughout the year. So we invite in, say, successful alumni from the tech sector to talk about what's going on in that sector, you know, how you might um, translate your skills to particular opportunities there. Um, and again, we actually so we have coming up in the next month or so mock interviews as well. So we use alumni and indeed recruiters to come and give our students interview practice. Um, and we will do a lot of the you know kind of career service engagement and employer engagements as well. So um, you know things like kind of office visits and careers fairs. So uh, wrapping up quickly, um, you know, no, I would say no career service presentation is complete without a, a slide of fancy logos on it. Um, look, I guess the th first thing to say is, you know, take this with a pinch of salt because what's obviously we work with some fantastic companies and fantastic companies based uh, locally here in Dublin, if that's where you want to work. Um, but obviously, you know, every class is different. MBA class is different in terms of what their backgrounds are and, and what they want to get into. And there's a, probably one thing that surprises a lot of students is actually how diverse the class is. You know, not everyone wa wants to work for McKinsey. Not everyone wants to work in tech, you know. And so um, that kind of resource that we have is really to primarily work with you as an individual and do a lot of things on a one-to-one -one basis, not just you know, careers fairs or presentations on a class level because there is such a diversity of, of interests. I mean, one thing that maybe ties a lot of the group together is that desire for career change, um, which I think Yassine yes, mentioned. You know, the majority, probably their primary goal is some, some degree of career change. Um, and, you know, if you look at our class, typically about 90% of people will either change country or sector or job function um, immediately after the MBA. And about 70% of people typically would, would change two of those things. So we have a good track record in and, and the MBA, you know, not this career service, it's the MBA really that has a good track record in helping people achieve that. Um, you know, and there's obviously a variety of different opportunities here in Ireland. There's a lot in consulting and tech, but there's also big pharma industry, um, increasingly fintech. So we've had companies like Stripe and Revolut enter, um, you know, shift operations to Ireland from the UK over the last couple of years and really establish this as their European base. Um, a number of students have also joined renewable energy companies in Ireland the last few years. Um, 
you know, and again, strong track record because of the brand and the domestic alumni network of supporting in people into careers here. Um, but, you know, that's not that everyone necessarily does that. I mean, we had last year people um, getting jobs in the US and uh, uh, the Netherlands and back in India. And, you know, so, so it's, it's global as well in terms of opportunities and the alumni network. So I'll probably wrap up there. Um, if I haven't covered everything, we have an opportunity now for Q&A where we can answer some of your questions, whether they be um, for Yasin and Daniel on their experience, for Jessica on admissions, or for me on the careers side. But once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this lovely presentation. And um, now it's time for, for the questions and for the Q&A session. Please type in your questions now so that I can read them out and uh, we can answer them. Okay, so we have the questions rolling in and the first one is, uh, I submitted my application for the MBA in, uh, for the full-time MBA in February and I'm yet to get my IELTS score. Will my application be reviewed without the IELTS score? So this is a question by uh, Reynold Rennie, and I think Jessica would be uh, the right person to answer this question. Yeah. So what I would say there is uh, ensure that it is in the status of application complete and ready to review. Um, so you need to make sure it's in the correct status. You need to make sure that you've also completed the Kira talent video section. Um, we can review without the IELTS, but what I would say is if it depending on which country you're applying from, we have actually been open from applications since the 1st of October last year. So especially if you're applying from India, it is quite late in the year to be applying. But what I'd recommend that you do is uh, email mba at ucd.ie with your uh, application details and the date that you have your IELTS and I can look into it for you, okay? Perfect. And could you please uh, give us an overview since we are on the subject of the application process? Can you tell us what it takes to uh, enroll and what the stages are? Yes. I mean, what I would say is like uh, I can go through briefly now. It is all available on our website. So I would always refer to the website in the first instance. But in short, what you need to apply is you apply online. So it's all on, done online. Uh, you need a minimum of three years professional experience. So you don't necessarily need to have managed a team, but you do need to have good, strong professional experience, managed um, projects, managed budget, things like that. You know, it needs to be, it can't be part-time jobs and can't be internships. So in the current full-time class, the average is seven years work experience. And in the executive part-time, it's actually 14 years work experience. So you can see it's actually higher, quite higher than what the minimum is. So you need that. And then you need to complete the application form along with two letters of recommendation, you also need an IELTS or a uh, TOEFL score if you're from a non-English speaking country. Uh, you also need two letters of recommendation and you submit everything along with the application fee. And if you are applying for the full-time program, you will also be asked to complete a short video segment as well. That's the Kira talent, which I mentioned there. And once all that's completed, then we can review the application for you. Once the application is reviewed and if it's deemed suitable, you will be called forward for interview. The interview either takes place over Skype or, to be honest, I think at the moment all will be over Skype. Everything will be over Skype uh, or generally as well, sometimes in person. And then following on from that, there is an admissions committee and you would get your answer following on from that. So we would say the process in total does take about six weeks, although please do be aware because of the current situation, there's obviously going to be a big delay on things. You know, we are working through it as much as we can. So for that person, for example, who implied, you know, if you applied at the end of February, you know, we're now mid-March, but obviously the last two weeks have been, you know, very unusual. So we do try to get back to people in general within five or six weeks. Thank you very much. We have a couple of questions here to um, addressing the uh, differences between the full-time and part-time MBA uh, and the, the full-time, between the full-time and executive MBA. This is uh, asking us Adam and uh, also the full-time and part-time MBA. So oh, much the full-time full MBA and the part-time MBA, we only have two programs. So the part-time MBA is also known as the executive MBA. There's no difference between the part-time MBA and the executive MBA. So the main difference between the two of them is pretty obvious. One is full-time over a one-year period. So you wouldn't be able to keep working, for example. You would need to you know, finish up whatever you're doing currently 
and fully commit to the program. Whereas the part-time executive program can be done either on the evenings or weekends, and it can be done as well as staying in your current position. So the part-time is better suited for people who you know, enjoy the industry that they're in and want to advance in it rather than people who want a career change, I would say. Also, the cohort would be a little bit older, so the average age would be in mid-30s, and there would, the average work experience would be about 14 years. Uh, the other difference would be, obviously, it's less immersive, and also the international trips that, have, that the guys were speaking about earlier, they are not mandatory in the executive. You can do them as optional modules, but they're not mandatory. But in terms of the actual content in the modules, it is the same. It is the same between the full-time and the part-time program. The only difference, as I said, is kind of the cohort of those who go on it, kind of sometimes the reasons why they're on it, like I said, and also that it doesn't have the trips and it's probably less immersive. Those would be the only difference. And the application form and the application process is the same. Okay, great. And uh, we also have a, a question here regarding the current situation. Um, do, you, do you have any... Uh, how, how, how do you tackle the, the current situation and do you have any of the courses that could be taken online? That's one of the questions. And another question is about the, uh, the trips that uh, are, are happening during the program. Can you give us an overview of their structure and how, how they happen, at what times? Yes, so in terms of the current situation, uh, I myself was actually on leave until yesterday, so I wasn't even in the country. So. Um, the current situation, uh, as far as I know, for the full-time class, and I, I think as well, maybe Daniel and Yassine could add in on this, is that the courses is now being taken online, and all courses are being done online for the rest of this semester. So obviously UCD is a huge university, and all our students have now had to go online. So there are contingency measures in place, and we're basically doing as much as we can, but obviously the situation changes hourly, you know, so you know we're doing as much as we can in that respect. In terms of you know, next year, like I said, as far as, as far as the current situation is, we are recruiting as normal. We are hoping that everything that's happening at the moment really should have leveled off in by then. But obviously I, ca I can't say, I, 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 don't, I don't have any control over it. Um, but then for the international trips, of course, obviously, if everything does go ahead as normal next year, for the international trips, there are, well, there's, there's three in total. So the first would be the GNAM week which Daniel spoke about. So that's the week where you get the opportunity to go abroad to a different MBA program and join them for a week. So you can go to Yale, you can go to Fudan University in China, you can do, go to a range of our partner universities and there's actually a list on the GNAM website. So you can check that out there. You also do have the option for that week to actually stay in Ireland. And some of our students for views of purposes really decide to actually stay and take that module in, in Smurfit rather than going abroad. And then the second trip, would be the international uh, study abroad trip, the doing business abroad trip. That's the trip that was happening last week. So half the class uh, went to Argentina and the other half of the class went to Scandinavia. So that's where you get to meet with you know, local businesses and you know, see how business is done abroad and done internationally. And that's a really fantastic way just to get that exposure. And then the third trip is the international consultancy project that will be happening in June. And that is where the class goes to a different European city and works with small local businesses on a consultancy project because we would have a lot of people who are interested in going into consultancy as a you know as a career so this really gives them a chance to you know experience that uh, you know in in live conditions so those would be the three trips uh, they are for the full time for the executive you can do the second two trips over the two years but as i mentioned they are optional so so i don't know if anyone on the full time program wants to kind of say anything on that but let me know Daniel, I think. Hey, how are you? Um, it's just in relation to the international trips, Jessica, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how they're kind of structured and how you found them. Um, you, yeah, yeah, I suppose course. for the GNAM, for GNAM, as Jessica said, you have the option to go to, I think it's up to 14 different institutes worldwide. Um, so you can select, you obviously give your preference um, for which one you want to go to and usually people get their preferences or you get your second or third choice. Um, they're all really good anyways. Um, or you can do it in Dublin. Um, funnily enough, this year, some of my classmates stayed in Dublin and um, did it with students that came from abroad. Um, I went to Yale, which would probably be the most popular one, but from actually listening to the people that did it in Dublin, um, the one in Dublin actually seemed to be nearly the best one. 
Um, and that was probably some of the, our older students in our class stayed in Dublin. Um, and that one was excellent. Um, in terms, I think the start of the question was about the coronavirus, the effect of the coronavirus on the international trips. Um, we went to Argentina last week. We kind of got lucky with that one. Um, myself and Yasin are doing the Georgetown case study competition. Like that's been cancelled now, but like we're doing it virtually from here. So we won't get to actually go abroad, but we do it from here. Um, but like Smurfit have been really good and UCD have been really good. Um, obviously it's only happened in the last week or so, um, but they've been excellent to us. Like they're really, I'll give you an example. Our online classes start back on Monday because this is like spring break week here right now. But um, myself and some of my classmates asked um, the Smurfit MBA program board and the professors, would they be able to kickstart our MBA classes um, with a class with um, one of our professors, Jim Power. Jim Pa Power would be a very well-known economist here in Ireland. Now he taught us in semester one, taught us economics, but we requested, given the current economic situation, we actually requested from the MBA, as students, we just asked the MBA program board, could we have a class with Jim Power um, next Monday morning, um, a web class, uh, just for him to give us insight on how we would be affected as students, how Ireland, the EU, and how the world would be affected from the COVID-19 virus and within a couple of hours Smurf had, had that set up for us so again it's kind of like what you make of it yourself um, we just asked and straight away and anything anything you want basically to help yourself um, Smurf will do their best to um, help you out and obviously like us being able to get that we'll have a one hour chat with Jim Power economist Jim Power um, on Monday so obviously that's invaluable for us to be able to get that um, so yeah, in terms of the effects of the coronavirus and the international trips, um, even with even with the virus, everything has been great. Really, like um, again, if you're willing to work with it and get the best out of it, um, uh, there's loads really to do. So I'm very grateful for it and happy, given the uh, even given the challenging times. Great, thank you, Daniel. And uh, now we have some uh, some questions related more to careers. Um, if uh, the, if you can tell us, uh, Mark, a little bit more about uh, the um, opportunities to stay in, in in Dublin after the studies, uh, there's a couple of questions here by by the attendees about uh, how how many how much time do they have a, a visa extension in order to try and find a job. That's uh, one part of the question. And the other part of, of the question is um, uh, how, how, how is the visa, what, what kind of visa is it and what kind of rights does it give? Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer that one. I mean, first thing to say, I'm not really um, necessarily a visa specialist. Um, but just to say there is the there is a two year stay back visa um, once you graduate from the MBA here um, and that essentially allows you to work full time. Now, you know, some companies will use that to employ people um, uh, in terms of the student gets that themselves and then the company will hire them. Um, probably it was actually more likely to be the case that the company will you know, you won't go on that visa at all and the company will sponsor your visa um, to remain in Ireland, you know, potentially beyond the two years. Um, you know, and that's what would need to happen at the end of the two years, um, even if you kind of got that stay back visa yourself. So, I mean, it's more common, particularly with students joining the bigger companies, that they would, um, the, the, the company would actually kind of sponsor a, a visa beyond the two years. Um, you know, obviously some people want to stay here, others want to go abroad. Um, if I look at the class of two years ago, uh, you know, all of our international students there were employed in Dublin post MBA. I mean, it's a small class, so, you know, you always got that caveat for that particular year. Obviously, a lot of them were looking to stay and, um you know, many of them were employed in Dublin within three months. You know, those that, that weren't there, that visa, stay back visa, bought them a few extra months to, you know, to find a job. And, and um, you know, within certainly kind of six months or so of graduating, they were all employed here. Um, last year was a little bit different because people 
seem to kind of go abroad a little bit more. Um, so as I said, that you know, there was, someone got a job in London, someone got a job in Amsterdam, a couple of people went to the US, a couple of people returned to India. Um, you know, so it was a little bit more spread out. Um, but I'd say, you know, I, my, my experience, I worked 10 years um, at a business school in the UK before uh, joining Smurfit. Um, you know, I'd have to compare the two experiences um so far i would definitely say that it seems easier for international students to find employment here in ireland so non-eu students i'm talking about here uh than it than in the uk at the time um now the uk is kind of changing back to a two-year visa um but you know my experience of having worked under the previous two-year visa in the uk um i would still say that here just in terms of the kind of undersupply of talent in Ireland versus the UK here the opportunities do seem better for non-EU versus the UK at the moment um you know but that's obviously I think it's it, it can take international students sometimes a little bit longer than domestic students find employment and um, simply because you know they're they're kind of running to catch up in terms of uh their local network but that's something that we 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 um uh, we help with of course in terms of connecting with alumni and employers um so i i mean hopefully that answers your question <laughs> um so generally it's very good but obviously it's up to you and uh you know there's there's no guarantees okay great thank you very much uh, now let's turn a little bit more, uh, a little bit of our attention uh, with this final question to the financing part of uh, of this endeavor, studying an MBA in uh, Ireland, and I will ask you probably Jessica to give us a little bit more details on the costs involved involved in the um, in the. In, in attending the program once. Uh, another, th another question that popped out here was on living costs as well, which is uh, a, a sizable fraction of the, of, the, of the costs there probably. And uh, finally, maybe you can finish by telling us a little bit more about the scholarship opportunities that uh, UCD Smurfit offers, and we can wrap up the, um, the questions. You are still uh, welcome to give us your questions, and in case any of them are not answered right now, you, we will follow up in any case with, with an answer by email. Okay, Jessica, on financing. Yeah, so the cost of the program is just under 35,000 euro. So this is for the full time MBA. Uh, so it's 34,500 euro, that's the full fees. How it works is if you were offered a place in the program, you need to pay a deposit, which is a thousand euro, then this is redeemed off your fees. And then you pay in three installments throughout the year. So you pay in Dece uh, September, December, and April. So the you know it is spread out. You don't need to pay the full amount in total. In terms, I think I saw a question there asking how much the trips are. The trips, the cost of the trips is included within that if you're on the full-time program. Uh, if you are on the executive part-time program, because those trips are not mandatory, if you do want to take part in them, then there is a cost. But we work with travel agents, so you actually get, you, you get them at a huge discount. What I would say is, you know, if you decide to extend that trip, then you do have to pay that for that yourself. But the, the actual trip that forms part of the MBA, that is included in the tuition fees. Uh, in terms of living costs, it really depends. You know, we do offer student accommodation on site. Um, and you can have, in terms of the fees for that for this year, I'm not actually sure what they're going to be this year, but if you refer to our website, they're all listed there. You know, Ireland, you know, it can be an expensive city, but what I would say is that you can absolutely live there as a student. That's no problem at all. We have, you know, Lidl and Aldi and, you know, everything like that. It, you can live, you know, you can live quite frugally or you can, you know, have a higher cost of living if that's what you choose. Again, I won't go through all the figures, but again, if you go to our website, there is a page where all of this is listed out, just so you can refer back to it when you're making your calculations. Um, so what I would say, so that is the cost for that. And then the cost for the executive MBA, it's just under 16,000 euro per year. So in total it's 32,000 is the tuition fee for that. Most people, in fact, all people doing our executive MBA would already live in Ireland because it is taught in person week to week. 
So it's not really possible for people to live abroad and fly in for it. So that's really the main cost that they need to do. But like I said, if you refer to our website, you can see all the different, it, there's a very good breakdown that is provided by our program office because they would, they would have the best idea. And then in terms of the scholarships available, we have a range of scholarships available. So you can apply for anything from regional scholarships to women on the MBA. We actually recently parted, uh, uh, sorry, partnered with the 30% Club which is for women in business, and we're offering two 50% scholarships with that. So in terms of all the scholarships that we have, again, they're all available on the website. And then in terms of how you apply for them, for the majority of the scholarships, you actually just apply for the scholarship within your application to the program. So at the end of the actual application, there is a section on scholarships and you put down which one you're most interested in and a supporting statement. That's all you need to do and you will be considered for any and all scholarships that you are eligible for. So say, for example, if you apply for one scholarship, you may not get that, but you may get another scholarship. So you just put down the one that you are most interested in. Um, and we try to, you know, we try to be as fair as possible. And, you know, we do have a number of them available. Uh, the only one that you don't need, that you do need to, excuse me, put a separate application in is the Aspire scholarship. So again, uh, you know, a lot, there's an awful lot of information on this. I could speak about this for an hour <laughs> and I'm, I'm aware I don't have the time. So again, if you refer to the scholarship page, all the information is there, but please just be aware that you actually don't need to do a separate application. It's, you just need to apply for the program itself. So if you are interested in scholarships, I would say a lot of the deadlines are in April. So definitely apply sooner rather than later. Okay.